James, it was quite a reaction in the press box on the full-time whistle there. Yeah, I don't think I was um, I was very neutral, to be honest, Jonathan. I think I probably showed my true colours as I am wearing at the minute, but it was just probably nearly for myself as a, as a supporter, a release of emotion, because I suppose from two weeks ago, <clears throat> we came from a very poor position uh, in the game to get back to the winning position, lost in the circumstances we did. And then today, being, I think, seven or eight points up, the next thing they clawed us back to a draw game, and it was... You know, it was, it was worrisome at stages, but then the boys did excellently well. Even though we missed, missed some opportunities at the end, but then to close out the game in the manner that they did, it was fabulous. Really have seen the opposite ends of the sporting spectrum from Galway supporters in the last couple of weeks, eh? Yeah, like, I, I suppose I was just thinking coming down in the care, like it's been a tough month for Galway supporters with the minors getting beaten, you know, the seniors losing the Leinster final, uh, the footballers getting beaten by RMA, etc. So you're kind of going, going into today's game with, with, with hope as opposed to expectancy, but I, I thought they performed brilliantly. You could see from the very off in the warm-up and in the first five minutes there was serious intent on their on their uh, their tackling, their aggression, just the body language was even was even excellent. And uh, I think fair, fair juice them. They got themselves over jam many of the time today and uh, they were full, full value for the victory. They should have probably won by a lot more. We should have probably had probably three goals in the game, if not more. I think there was something like 18 wides and five goal opportunities missed. So it's great to come away from a game with, with things to work on and having a victory behind your back. I think everybody, joking aside, expected to be very even encounter. And maybe for 15, 20 minutes it was that. It was a point swing back and forth, six points apiece. The sides levelled six times. Exactly. And you were hoping that we'd, just, we'd, we'd stick, with, stick with them because it was the kind of a game whereby it was... You know, it's finally balanced, and if a goal went in either end, you could, you could turn the game entirely. But again, once the opportunity started rising on, on the in the first half, you could feel there was a sense that Galway were, were on top, and that they were on top on merit. Not just had a purple patch, but were on top on merit. They were open up Tipperary. Conor Whelan absolutely skinned Cahill Barrett inside out, which is probably not a thing that's been said very often. Cahill Barrett is a fa- fantastic cornerback, but Whelan just Whelan's just been honoured the last two games. And like, yeah, I do always say, if, if we're going to go anywhere with Galway. Conor Whelan has to be a mainstay and he has to be coming away with 1-4, one, 1-5 one, every day and that's what he's doing. And the caveat to that performance is for large periods, particularly in the first half, he's just chasing his head, you know, he's almost getting a sore neck from balls, just being horsed left, right and centre, unwinnable balls. Yeah, and it's, it's very taxing too because if you watch the way they're <clears throat> at times they play, you know, those balls coming in from 70, 80 yards and they're, they're being asked to run across the pitch 70, 80 yards to get onto a ball and like, there's only so much of that you can do repetitively and there's times there where he's like he's like a lone as they say a soccer number nine or number ten where he's up there by himself and it's, it's very very taxing and it's a lot to ask of and you can see at the end of the game for a person who's as fit as Kevin Cooney and, and Conor Whelan they were just they were just taxed you know there was they were gassed after all the run they did but fair to them because even the people that came in Jason Flynn, Flynn when he came in he's been excellent since he came in every every day this year first thing he does is get a turnover and we get a point of it that's a huge contribution for for any sub coming in so I think all we have They've, they've certainly righted the wrongs of last week, or two weeks ago, excuse me, but they have a lot more to do. It's no surprise that from an attacking perspective, you have Whelan from play and Nyland from freeze, from freeze, and that kept Galway ticking over in the first half. Some of Nyland's, you'll see at what, 7 8 freeze in the end, but there's some long distance ones there as well. Not even the first one he got was 45 over on the left wing. Yeah. He was on it today, and Galway needed him. Uh, he was on it, and down here at pitch side, you could see, even you and I were struggling to determine which way the breeze was going. So for a, a, a free taker here, it's difficult to ascertain when you look at the, even the flags, which way the direction is going to, to have allowances. But it's great to have confidence in a free taker knowing that when he steps over the ball, there's a 95% chance he's going to score it. So like Evan right now is up there with the best free takers in the country. He's up there with TJ. He's up there with Aaron Galen. And it's super for Galway because you know that when we get an opportunity from a free, regardless of where the position is within 65s, there's a strong chance of going over the bar. Character of Galway side was obviously going to be shot after the manner of the defeat to Kenny couple of sucker punches t- tip with a couple of changes turn the screw in the second half but God we always seem to get a score back at vital moments yeah but we were the maker of our own downfall like there's no tip didn't open us up at all if we're f- to, to be truthfully honest we should have won this game by 10 points you know with all the opportunities we had and the wise we had it was we're all over them and we just weren't making enough opportunities so again that's what we said about working on but in, in essence Tip did great to come back and you could expe- you could feel it like we were up there in the press box and you could feel Tip were going to try and, and launch an attack at the crowd behind them the, the whole Tip chant was coming uh, but luckily we nullified it. Have you got the hay done? The, t- the tipper bet is the hay done? <laughs> the hay's, how are you lads? <laughs> the hay is done since last week. I was just saying to someone, it's great to have two in the bales to draw in. There's loads of thinking time. <laughs> loads of thinking time, which is dangerous for me at times. But the hay is done, tipper bet, let's move on to Limerick. You're sitting in the fancy Limerick seats here uh, at the Gaelic grounds. That's a big ask. Like The, the parameters that Henry Side stepped up from the Leinster final... 
it's up another couple of suitcases or staircases after is required now. Yeah, I think there's been, I suppose, contrasting forms coming into Crow Park. Limerick uh, haven't been beaten at Crow Park in a long time. I think probably the last time they've been beaten at Crow Park would have been the, the Kilkenny semi final of 2019. That's a long time ago, and the last time we won a game, barring a, Wex- a Lynch semi final, was a 2017 at Ireland. So, you know, our form in Crow Park hasn't been hectic. So, but it's, it's, again, it's a great opportunity because we come in as underdogs, obviously, but there's a great battle in the Galway team. Like, they're never, they're never beaten by 10 points. They're always within every single game, like, regardless of what game they play, whether it be the draw in the group game in Kilkenny the draw against Dublin like they have bad patches but they'll always be there so that's that's great to go to Crow Park in two weeks knowing that we'll be in the fight it's just can we deliver a couple of knockout punches to Limerick and see if we progress one step further as the sun beats across on top of you there it's like a, a Galway sunshine the other end of the shadow John Kiley watching on no doubt today is he going to be overly concerned what obviously Declan Hannan is the big yeah. big moment or from, from his side how concerned is he going to be watching on with that Galway performance today? I don't think he's very concerned at all. I think, to be honest, when he, when he assesses his team's performance over the last five or six years, it's very easy to look at it and say 12 finals and 12 wins. You know, they've come away with, with, with four or five at Ireland's, four, three or four leagues, five monsters. It's, it's, it's a fabulous record and it's fully deserving. I think, he's, I think John Kiley and Canuck, they have great faith in their panel and deservedly so because they've, they've won all around them in fairness. And they, they deserve to be at the level they're at in terms of the way the public talk about them being, being an obvious number one. And that's exactly what they are. They're an obvious number one. And they're not there by accident. They're there on merit and they're there on sustained merit, which is very hard for a team to, to, to keep going for, for the period they have. And they've done it with the team, the same team, over the number of years. So, so again, you, you, they've been to war, they've won the wars, and it's just the next team up now is, is us. And uh, we haven't won too many wars in, re- in recent times, but look at what, what, a, what a chance and what a game to look forward to. Any hope at all? If we could keep it in 10 points, we'd be doing well. <laughs> <laughs> Say that with a straight face. The early game from today, then, uh, scoreline blew it out of the park on the way, but like yeah. your old manager that you went to war with got over the line. He'd be pleased enough with aspects of the first half where they created a lot of havoc today, I suppose a much changed clear defence. Yeah, it was. And in fairness, bearing a probably a three and a half, four minute spell before half time. I think they conceded 2-3 without reply. Um, Dublin were right in the game. And they had loads of opportunities like, because the, the ball that was being delivered into the full forward line, they were getting plenty plenty guys onto it, weren't exactly creating. Sorry, they were creating, but they weren't executing. They weren't uh, very, very efficient, which against a team who was the perceived better, you, you need to take those opportunities. And, and conceding 2-3 and also losing Donald Burke, like, it's, it's, an, it's, an, it's a mammoth task. Like, lo- losing Donald Burke to Dublin would be the same as losing a Shane Donald and Tony Kelly for Clare. So that, that's... That can't be underestimated either. And they, st- they stayed in the fight, but just when, when you concede two three like that, nine points in essence, right, right before half time, it's a knockout blow. And it's, it's very hard for a team, any team at all, regardless of who you're, who you're playing for, very hard to come back from that kind of, uh, that kind of period before half time. Well, weakness seems to be running out of the way to describe it. Tony Kelly, masterclass again. 3 4 from play. 3 4 from play. He's like the, the, the great thing about great players is they're always in the right spot, and he's in the right spot. He's, he's such a penetrative runner. Uh, it's like when he gets the ball the 40 yards out anything can happen regardless of how many opposition defenders are in front of him and he's just been he's been a fabulous player over the last number of years a fabulous ambassador for the sport and he's continuing to grow it's like he's not even with age like he's if you remember he was hurled of the year in 2013 here we are 10 years later still doing the business fantastic hurler and one of those players second minute of the game he gets the ball maybe 50 yards out and I turn to you and say this is going to be a goal you're right because it's like the the Red Sea parted and it's just you can see the way the the tip or not the, the the Dublin backs were being moved by the clear the clear forwards and I thought it was very very sharp the way they set up they set up set up very narrow so that as soon as an attack formed whether Fitzgerald or Taylor or Kelly it opened up and there was loads of opportunities clever play I won't say it's a, a move off the training ground but it's certainly a tactic or a way a way they operate that uh, that I, I I would certainly think Derek Lean would have something in his uh, armory for that. Talk about some enthralling games we've had in the Monster Championship this, this year to date, but yeah. the semi-finals are just stacked now, aren't they? Stacked, and I think is the same as same pairings last year, isn't it? I think so, same pairings last year, and that hasn't happened in a while, probably seven or eight years, but again, we, we got treated to two two games last year. One of them was, as you know, it was a, a null affair with Kilkenny Clear, and the one against Galway Limerick was, it was an excellent, excellent affair, but it's going to be different this year. Like No two years are the same. And Clare are going to come back now with serious bite. Again, their record in Crow Park isn't hectic over the last number of years. Um, it's, it's, you struggle to think how many games they've won since they won the last All Ireland. So they, they have plenty of motivation. And as of Kikini, it's like it's in the water down there. No matter what young lad comes into that team, there's always going to be a huge work ethic, a huge hurling ability, a huge intent for victory. And it's just 
it sets it up for a massive task um, for both teams to get over each other. And again, us as hurling fans, it's great to look forward to. I'll put you on the spot now in the shining sun as a couple of people walk by. Who's going to be in the final? Uh, clear, I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> Where are you going with the white shoes and the suit? <laughs> Your former teammate Joe Cannon passed them by. He always has something to say, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> um, if I was to call it this moment in time, I, it's it's hard not to it's hard to look past Clare, to be honest. I think with the, with the way they, that last year went and and the manner in which they they got beaten, I think they've they've a lot of wrongs to right, and I think they're well positioned to do so. And then in the other semi final, not sure if we have a chance at all. We'll wait and see. But it's a uh, limerick of the Clare favourites. And uh, lastly, straight back home, no blowing the horns, going past the border into tip now. No, I'll go home now like a Cheshire cat, <laughs> sitting and just, I'll sit in silence and just be happy. Um, no, I was content, like, it was, it was a very hard game to call prior. And I think that's for obvious reasons, because we're so tightly matched. Um, and I suppose statements I made in the hurling pod during the week, <clears throat> setting me up for a nice bit of, how do I say, correspondence from the Tipperary people. And that's great, that's all part of sport too. So I'm, uh, I'm quite content that we're going home with the victory. Look forward to Monday night. I believe you're in uh, club action. You have a small matter of a, yeah, a league have, final. We have a league final tomorrow against Loch Ray, the old enemies. Um, so that'll be back to club action. So it's very. Uh, hopefully now we'll have Gerlath, who's who's on the panel here at Galway. I doubt we'll have Liam. Uh, another good battle, hopefully. And then uh, we'll have to defer the hurling pod until Monday because I doubt I'd be in <laughs> a good state Sunday evening, please God. A league final and Galway beaten tip. That's quite a combination. And, of course, the hay brought home. And the hay saved. So, again, all things are looking well.